Free public transportation, it's an idea gaining speed in cities across the country. But as Chris Conte explains, it's not just those who ride the bus or train, but who could be benefiting from these ideas. We often spend so much time lamenting about the ways in which we commute. How much time do we spend thinking about how much that commute actually costs? Public transit is really shifting toward a public good. Meet Stacy Thompson. She's with a nonprofit called Livable Streets Alliance. And for years, they have been working to break down barriers when it comes to Americans' access to public transportation. Sometimes making a choice between um, paying for a monthly pass it means that you can't buy groceries for your children. Last month, the city of Boston announced the continuation of a two-year pilot program providing fare-free bus rides to residents on three bus routes, the 23, the 28, and the 29. Those numbers probably don't mean much to you, but these three routes carry 100,000 riders. They also serve some of Boston's most diverse and economically challenged neighborhoods. Demonstrating what's possible with free fares is really wonderful. By some estimates, Americans spend nearly 13 percent of their household income on transportation, which can be a big deal. We spoke to a woman a few years ago who was skipping chemotherapy treatment because her bus either wasn't coming or she couldn't afford it. And so that, of course, has real, you know, life and death consequences. Preliminary data also shows that 5 percent of riders chose to take the bus who would have otherwise just driven their car all because the ride was free. If you reduce the number of cars by 5%, you can reduce congestion by 20%. Free transit seems expensive, but if you as a driver could get 5% of the other cars off the road and reduce your experience of congestion by 20%, wouldn't it be worth it to you? Cities across the country have implemented fare-free programs. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Missoula, Montana, Olympia, Washington. Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, and Denver have also explored the idea. What we're seeing is public transit is regrouping. Uh, it's repositioning for the future. Paul Scotillis is with the American Public Transportation Association. He hopes fare-free programs will get people back onto a bus or train who might have left because of COVID. People have gotten out of the habit of using public transportation. There's another layer to all of this, efficiency. Removing fare collection from buses or trains dramatically decreases the amount of time conductors or drivers have to spend waiting for people to pay. Less waiting means more time moving. It is such a vital service to communities and to people who rely on it every day. Rethinking the American commute, one fare at a time. I'm Chris Conti.